Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to look at an example calculation of freezing point depression and also look at some of the quantitative reasoning type questions that frequently get asked surrounding colligative properties. Our objectives for this video are to carry out these calculations with colligative properties including colligative properties of electrolyte solutions. This example problem asks us to calculate the freezing point of a 0 0.550 molal solution of glucose in water. Uh, before we jump into our calculations, we're going to need a value for i and a value for k. Um, so let's start by figuring out which substance we need to look for in the case of the F table, because we have two substances here. One of them is glucose and one of them is water. Our K value will depend on the solvent. So in order to look this up, we want to look for whichever chemical is the solvent. And since it says it's glucose in water, water is playing the role of solvent. So we need to look up the KF value for water. So I snipped the uh, table that has all of these constants in it and snipped just the water portion. The KF value for water is 1.86 degrees C per molal. And just a reminder, the freezing point of water is zero degrees C. In getting ready for a quiz or a test, I would expect you to memorize the freezing points in Celsius for water and the boiling point. But for any other chemical, I'll give you um, the freezing point and the boiling point. So for instance, if the solvent was benzene, I would tell you what the freezing point of benzene was, as well as the case of F value. And I do not expect you to memorize the KF for water, just the freezing point and the boiling point. Okay, so now that we've got a value for k sub f, let's take a look at our equation. Our equation says that delta t sub f is equal to i times k sub f times m, and we have a number for k sub f, right? Our k sub f value will be 1.86. We also need a number for i. Well, glucose is C6H12O6, which makes it a molecular compound or a non-electrolyte, and so I is equal to 1. When glucose dissolves, for every 1 mole of glucose, we get 1 mole of glucose particles because the molecule sticks together. And so I is equal to 1, and the molality was given as 0 0.550. So we're ready to plug numbers in. I is 1. K sub F is 1.86 degrees C per molal. And our molality was 0 0.550 molal. So molality cancels with molality. And this tells us that our delta T sub F will be 1.86 times 0 0.550. And my calculator is telling me that is 1.023 degrees C. Now that number, 1.023, is our delta T sub F. Freezing point is depressed, so that's telling us that our freezing point has been lowered by 1.023 degrees C. Since we are asked to find the freezing point of the solution, well, we still have one step left to go. The delta T sub F is given by the freezing point of the pure solvent minus the freezing point of the solution. We now have a number for delta T sub F. Delta T sub F is 1.023. The freezing point T sub F of the solvent is zero because pure water freezes at zero. And then minus T sub F of our solution. So cleaning this up a little bit, we have that 1.023 is equal to minus T sub F of the solution. And flipping the sign on both sides of that equation leads us to T sub F of the solution 
is negative 1.023 degrees C. So the freezing point was lowered from 0 degrees C for pure water to negative 1.023 degrees C for this 0 0.550 molal solution of glucose. Tests like the ACS final for Gen Chem 2 and often like for you to use these numerical reasoning problems. Um, what we're asked to do, you, you could potentially calculate delta T sub F for each one of these solutions, um, but you don't have to go all the way on all of these calculations to get there. It wants to know which of these solutions will have the lowest freezing point. So freezing point gets depressed. So the lowest freezing point or the solution with the lowest freezing point will be the solution that has the biggest value for delta T sub F. Now remember that delta T sub F is equal to I times K sub F times M. Well, all of these solutions are aqueous. So that means that for all of these solutions, K sub F is the same. So we don't need to, to worry about dealing with K sub F. Um, but if you look at the answer choices, the molalities are different and the Van Hoff I factors are different. So we need to examine I times molality for each one of these solutions whichever one has the biggest I times M will have the biggest delta T sub F, which means the most depression of the freezing point and therefore the lowest freezing point. So we just need to examine I times M for all of these. Well, for pure water, um, that's going to be zero degrees C for its freezing point, and all of the solutions are going to have lower ones, so it can't possibly be pure water. So that's just three that we have to consider. So I times M is um, what we need to calculate for these three. For answer B, 0.2 molal sucrose, I is one. And the molality is 0.2, sucrose is molecular, non-electrolyte, so I is 1. So I times M is 0.2 for the solution of sucrose. For answer C, we have sodium chloride. The I factor for sodium chloride is 2. We get one sodium ion and one chloride ion because it's a metal plus a non-metal. It's ionic. It's an electrolyte. It breaks apart. Um, the concentration was 0.2 molal, so that's going to give us 0.4. So, so far, the salt solution has the lowest freezing point. And then for our last one, we have a 0.15 molal solution of potassium sulfate. Well, when potassium sulfate dissociates, we're going to get two separate potassium ions plus a sulfate ion. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion, so when this substance dissociates or ionizes, the sulfate, this one sulfur and the four oxygens stick together as one particle. So the, we have one sulfate plus two potassiums, which means our I factor is a three. So if we take uh, the molality of 0.15 times the I factor of three, we're going to end up with 0.45. And uh, I just realized I flipped I and M in this uh, part D example. So I is the 3 and M is the 0.15, whereas I had it in the opposite order in the previous ones. So what we're looking for here is the I times M that's the biggest to give us the most freezing point depression. So 0.45 is our biggest one, and so the solution with the lowest freezing point will be the 0.15 molal potassium sulfate. If you are taking the 1142 lab, you will be doing an experiment in the lab where you calculate the molar mass of a substance by freezing point depression. I think this is kind of a cool thing because you can take the equation for freezing point depression and do a little bit of a substitution for uh, the mole part 
in the equation for molality. Um, you can take the mass of your sol solute um, and uh, the molar mass of the solute, make the substitution, and rearrange the equation. And you end up with an equation for the molar mass um, based on the freezing point depression. So here's the freezing point depression, or how many degrees the freezing point was lowered. Um, notice that you're using the mass of the solvent in kilograms. That's coming from the definition of molality, right? Moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Um, that does make for a little bit of a trick as you're doing that calculation. Make sure your mass of solvent is actually in kilograms and not grams. And then uh, you'll use the case of F for your solvent, whatever the solvent happens to be. And uh, you will need to measure the mass of your unknown um, before you dissolve it up in your solvent. And, and actually, you'll need to measure the mass of your solvent, too, when you're in the lab. So this um, uh, whole idea of freezing point depression has an interesting application here in giving us an experimental technique to calculate the molar mass of a substance. That's kind of nice because we've, um, in, in GenChem 1, we always approach molar mass as being something that you get off the periodic table. But if you can do something like freezing point depression and calculate the molar mass of your substance, that um, is one way that you can actually identify an unknown. In addition to freezing point depression, we can do everything that we just did, but in the reverse direction with boiling points. Boiling points are elevated by the presence of a solute in a solvent. And so when we look at our delta T sub B, in order to give us a positive number for that, we're looking at the boiling point of the solution minus the boiling point of the pure solvent. And the equation looks exactly the same, except that we're going to have a B on our K now. So it'll be I times K sub B times M. When you go to that table to look up your colligative properties, or the, the constants that are associated with colligative properties, now you want to look for K sub B instead of K sub F. And just remember that boiling point will work in the opposite direction of freezing point. Boiling point gets elevated. And so if you're asked to find which one has the highest boiling point, you're looking for the one with the biggest product of I times M. Um, and one of the ways, um, it, or the way that I find it most helpful for remembering the directions is to keep in mind the idea that adding a solute to a solvent extends the temperature range over which the, that solvent remains liquid. So for instance, if we're talking about something like um, water, Let's just do a real quick sketch here where the vertical direction represents temperature. Um, if we're talking something like water, its uh, freezing point will be at zero degrees C. And then if we add um, a solute to it, the freezing point will be depressed to a lower temperature. So this would represent T sub F of the solution. And if we're talking water, its boiling point would be 100 degrees. But if we add a solute to it, that boiling point for the solution gets elevated. And so this basically, whether you're talking about um, the boiling point or the freezing point, adding a solute extends the range over which the substance stays a liquid. So we would have this, uh, I didn't sketch this very well. If we look at the pure solvent, it will be liquid over this range that I just sketched in. And if we're talking about the solution, it will be a liquid over this larger range. So that would be the solution over this larger range. So boiling points get elevated and freezing points get depressed.